What's up, it's Chris from Poolometry, and today I'm gonna give you my thoughts on a bunch of different racks. These are the racks that I own, and I'm also gonna talk about a couple racks that I do not own but have had a chance to test. In no particular order, I have the Delta 13 Select, we've got a generic wood rack, you've got the new to the market Aero rack from Predator, you've got a traditional thin plastic rack, we've got the branded Magic rack, and here I'm gonna put a picture of the rack I use at my pool hall, it's that thick heavy duty plastic rack. In order to compare them, I came up with a bunch of categories I think are relevant to how a rack compares to another. First, I talk about stiffness. Stiffness is when your fingers are against the balls, do the rails flex? Basically, can you push this inward? Now, not just with the strength of your arms, but like will your fingers end up flexing them? And I find with the Delta, the wood, the Predator, and the heavy duty plastic, there is no flex in the rails at all. So I gave them a 10 out of 10. For the Magic Rack, I thought it's not really applicable, so I gave it an NA for this calculation and didn't include it. For the Thin Rack, I was sort of torn a little bit because it does flex quite easily, but by the time you put your fingers in there and push the balls hard, before the rails flex, the balls actually pop up. So the stiffness doesn't end up mattering. So I ended up giving it a nine out of 10 because although it isn't very stiff, the stiffness somehow it doesn't matter when you push your fingers against it, it still makes a tight rack. Second, I rated the tightness of the fit of the balls, that there were no gaps between any of the balls. And for a 10 out of 10, there's only one rack that can get this rating, and that's gotta be the magic rack, because no matter the condition of the felt or the table, it's always gonna hold a new set of balls perfectly tight with no gaps. So that's a 10 out of 10, but Close behind it is the Aero Rack and the Predator Select. I find they are really just perfect. There's no gaps, no matter which way you spin it and put the balls in, I find the balls with no gaps. They're perfect. In fact, I find with them too, I can actually hold them tight. It might not happen here, but I can slide the whole rack without the balls rolling, where I can't do that on some of the other racks. So both the Predator and the Delta get a nine out of 10 for tightness. Now we move down a little bit for the plastic rack, although it can flex and all that, and it's just a piece of cheap plastic, I've actually found this quite effective to not have any gaps. This I gave an eight out of 10. Now way below them score for the wood rack and the heavy duty plastic rack. For the wood rack, I just find it is, I don't know if this is just because it's old or inconsistent for um, a lot of times it's, you know, you can see the marks where the balls end up touching the rail. It, in fact, there's only one orientation I haven't marked. I have to put it, where is it? I have to put it this way forward if I have any hope of having a tight rack. And for the heavy duty plastic rack, no matter which way I turned it, I always had a small gap between these head balls right here. Just a tiny, tiny gap, but it was a big enough for me to see. And if it's impossible to get a perfectly tight rack, that can't be anywhere close to a good score. So that was five out of 10, and the wood rack was five out of 10 for tightness of fit. Third, I ranked their perceived durability. Now, the Delta Select, I gave a 10 out of 10 because this thing is just solid. I know it has some screws, and that is my only nervousness, is what happens if those screws become loose. But I feel like you could drive a car over this thing, and it would be in, still in good shape. So I give this a 10 out of 10. The wood rack is clearly aging poorly over time with, I think it can get warped, it's getting chipped. This is pretty junky when it comes to durability. I gave that a five out of 10. The Aero Rack is also feels really durable. It's very strong and I feel like these edges will wear very nicely and evenly. Um, and um, this metal isn't going anywhere. But I do feel if you misused it, like if you stepped on it or leaned on it or somebody was just sort of goofing around and fell on it, I feel like you could snap this here. So I gave that a nine out of 10 because in everyday use, I don't think it's a problem but it could break. Same with the plastic rack. This feels a little less durable. I gave it an eight out of 10 because it does seem to keep its shape fine, but you could snap it easily. And then the magic rack, that's another one I gave low durability to. I gave that a five out of 10. If you just get the slightest crease in it, it, it just can mess it up. And this heavy dirty uh, plastic rack, I gave a nine out of 10 because although it is tough, I feel like it might be denting over time. Maybe that's why at the pool hall, it is not giving a tight fit. Fourth, I rated their ease of use. That is, how quickly can you go from not having a rack of balls to a fully perfect rack of balls? 
And the only 10 out of 10 for ease of use is the Predator Aero Rack. I find the unique feature of you being able to get your fingers underneath it to lift it off, it is the best when it comes to rack removal, right? So, okay, you've got a perfect rack. Now what? Do you bump it at all? And with the Aero Rack, you don't bump it because you can really control its height against the ball. So this got a 10 out of 10. Very close behind is the Delta Select. This is makes a beautiful rack of balls quickly, although you can't get your fingers under it. It really is easy to use and get you a perfect rack every time. So those are 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Close behind is actually your plastic rack. It works quickly and effectively. Um, it's Good, I, I just still, the thing for this is the gap size, which I'll rank later. It is a smaller gap size, so you gotta be a little more careful when you lift it, so I gave that an eight out of 10. For the Magic Rack, although you don't have to fight with it if you remove the rack and the table stinks and they roll, it does take a long time to set up the balls, so I gave that a six out of 10 because you don't ever have to go back to it once it's set. However, it does take a long time to set up. And then for the Wood Rack and the Heavy Duty Plastic Rack, I gave them a 5 out of 10 because you really have to fight with them to try to get anything good for a rack. Fifth, I rated the aesthetic appeal of each of these racks. I gave first place a 10 out of 10 to the Delta Select. I think with the leather inserts and this, these, it's just like a smooth aluminum. I feel like it just looks really handsome, really classy. That's a 10 out of 10. Close behind it, I give a nine to the Aero Rack. It also has really clean lines and it has a neat contrast with the gloss and the matte finish, but the thickness of the rails, it just looks different and it takes a lot of pool players some time to come around to. It's just like, what, what is that? It's like, oh yeah, it's a pool rack. Um, I gave it a nine out of 10 because it looks great, but I'm still not in love with it. For the Magic Rack, I gave an eight. Um, it's pretty simple, but it, it's, I don't know, how would you talk about it? it? I think in terms of when you see someone using it, you kind of think like, oh, they're cool. They're a real pool player, right? They're using the magic rack. They're getting a perfectly tight rack. So there's sort of a clout to it that is kind of neat, but it's also just sort of basic. So I gave that an eight. To the wood rack, at least when it's new, it looks really nice, but it does wear. So I gave that a seven, as well as the heavy duty plastic rack. It actually, I like that look of the heavy duty plastic, just that toughness of it. I gave that a seven and then down to a five for your thin plastic. Uh, yeah. Finally, I ranked the ease of removing the rack from the table, which is an easy 10 out of 10 for the Predator Aero Rack. It has the largest gap between the balls and the rack itself, and because you can get your fingers under and there's not material there, when you just lift it a little bit, it's already going to clear the balls, so it can quickly get past uh, the rack here this way. Now, close behind it, I give a 9 out of 10 to the Delta Select. It also has a half an inch gap size here. It just needs a little bit more care to get a little higher before you can move it forward. Still not hard, but not as easy as the Aero Rack. For an eight out of 10, I give to the Magic Rack. Why would I dock two points from a rack that doesn't have to be removed in order to break? Well, once you do break, sometimes a ball gets stuck on the rack and you have to play with it on the table until that ball gets moved and I really don't like that. So I docked it two points for an eight out of 10. Now, between these two plastic racks, they both have a 3 8 inch gap between the balls, which would seem they would be equal. But because of this shape, it almost seems like it kind of goes down at an angle. It ends up being a little harder to clear the top of the balls. So I gave the heavy duty plastic rack a seven, and this a six, and the wood rack only has a quarter inch between the back of the balls, which is just really mind blowing that um, they could have just made it a little bit bigger, and maybe some are, but this wood rack really doesn't clear the balls well. After already having a tough time racking them, it's tough to get the rack out of the way. So that's a five out of 10. Now for some cons and pros. The thing I don't like about each one and its best feature. For this rack, I don't like how noisy it is without the leather inserts. You gotta pay $40 more to get these leather and you need it. Without these leather dampeners on it, it sounds like you are breaking dishes. It is just crazy. You think you can live with it, but you can't. You need to spend more money to get these leather inserts. I don't like that. But what I do love about this rack, its best feature, it just feels like a solid quality piece of work um, that's going to last for years to come. For the cons for this one is obviously its durability. It's just really, it's chipped so easily from use. It also can warp with humidity and things like that. It's just cheap. But the good thing about it, especially in contrast to this, it's quiet to use. It's fairly, I don't know, is that what you really look for in a rack anyway? But it is quiet. 
For the Aero Rack, as much as I love this thing, there are three things I don't like. For one, I don't like that they put an orientation on it, that it should go this way, because unless I am missing something, it, it can go this way and this way too, but for some reason it forces you to go this way. And I don't know why, I just don't want to have to think about the orientation, I just want to put it down on the rack. Um, the second thing I don't like is it gets fingerprints on the bottom here, but that's sort of a mute point because it's usually on the bottom. The third thing I don't like, which is actually sort of a big problem, is the edges are sharp on the fingers. It's not going to cut you, but it's uncomfortable for me. I know other people who use it who don't even notice it. They're just sort of touching it here, but I don't like that sharp edge. It actually sort of turns me off a little bit. I don't know why they can't round that down a little bit. For its best feature, however, is again, as I talked about, it's just ease of use. It can just lift right off the balls with one hand with almost not even any care at all. To the pros and cons of the cheap plastic rack, well, it's ugly and it looks cheap. That is a major con for me, but it's also the pro. What's the best thing about this rack? It is cheap. To the magic rack, some things I don't like about it, well, I don't like that it gets stuck on the table. I don't like that it's annoying to use. It's hard to set up the balls, but more importantly, if you have a set of balls that are kind of really worn, um, it actually can leave a gap. It's designed for the shape of a new ball and over time they do get a little bit thinner and thinner so if you have a um, if you don't have a new set of balls you might need to purchase a new set of balls to get it to work and that's a little bit annoying and to the heavy duty plastic rack the best thing about it I think is its durability it just feels rugged I feel like it might be the best value for a pool hall even though it doesn't make a great rack it's gonna last a long time and it's gonna do the job in a way but nobody's gonna walk off with it either you can't you know you're not gonna invest in these racks for a pool hall um, but its worst feature is also the gap that it has in the two balls in that front that I've found that it's not very consistent. So now I've got all this information on the left here and when I add up the numbers there is no question about which racks are the best. With an even ranking I give to first place tied between the Aero Rack and the Delta Select. They are both beautiful. Pick which one you want. You spend the money on either one. You're going to be happy with the rack they produce. Um, are you a Predator fan? You'll probably end up picking up the Aero Rack. Do you like sort of the clean look of the metal? Maybe you'll get the Delta Select. I recommend both of them. They are excellent. However, the others are really not that great. You can get a good rack for not a bad price with the Magic Rack, but I don't like it myself, and my ranking shows that. A couple more racks to consider. First, the Diamond Polycarbonate. I've actually used this rack but wasn't doing product reviews at the time. I remember thinking it was big and clunky and not particularly handsome but made a really good rack. So I think that's what you're going to get for $35. I think your quality is going to be really high and the value is going to be high in terms of actually racking the balls. I would guess the Rassen Method and the Delta 13 Elite, I bet those aluminum racks are really going to do a great job although they're quality is high. I think the value is going to be low. You're going to spend a lot of money to get what you could probably do for closer to $100. The other wood racks on the market, I'm going to recommend you stay away from. It's possible if you had a really uh, a much harder wood, like an oak or something like that, they might do a better job. But again, I think wood is going to be susceptible to the conditions and actually really they're not going to hold up as well. Then you've got the generic magic racks. I would stay away from them, especially at a low price point. I've heard that they just don't hold the balls as perfectly. Then you have the Sardo and the Chameleon. These I don't think are produced as much anymore. They were really popular before but have since fizzled out. I think what's going on here is they're a really cool idea, sort of over-engineered, but I'm going to recommend anything with moving parts like this. It's going to be flashy and cool at first, but sooner than later, you're going to hang it up on the wall as a decoration and you're going to go for a simpler model where you're going to use your fingers to actually make a tight rack. So to wrap up, what is the best rack on the market? Well, I can't answer that for certain, but I can definitely recommend the Predator Aero Rack and the Delta 13 Select. They are excellent. But if you are looking for something a little more economical, I'd recommend the Diamond Polycarbonate. It's not as handsome, but I bet it is equal to the task. If you own one of the other racks I didn't rate out of 10, please consider trying your best to rate it in the same categories and let us know in the comments below how you think it might compare to those seen here. For more product reviews and other pool content, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.